So on the one hand, there was an attempt to kind of modernize Muslim societies, and some of these attempts were uh, put forth by leaders of those societies. But one of the challenges I think that happened is that in many cases, these transformations were, were very rapid, and you have to keep in mind that when the West became quote-unquote modern, that transformation happened over several hundred years. But from some of these Islamic societies, that transformation was happening at a much more rapid pace, and I think that as a result, the transformation was, was quite superficial and had, had a lot of dangers associated with it. Uh, and that, that danger was definitely pointed out by a number of uh, very well-known Muslims. So uh, to start with, Jamal al-Din, a.k.a. al-Afghani, and there's a picture of him right here, um, al-Afghani. And al-Afghani basically um, was somebody who was alive from 18... 39, 1839 until 1897, and I think his pseudonym, al was maybe tried to convey that he was more of an Afghan Sunni, but in reality he was actually a Shia Iranian, and he basically may have, may have come up with a pseudonym to help attract a wider audience. And he believed that to avoid getting crushed by the West, uh, the Muslim world must cohesively cultivate its own uh, cultural tradition. Um, but, but not only that, they must become more rational and modern in response to the changed that they perceive in external conditions. So in other words, cultivate their own culture while in the process still becoming more quote-unquote rational. All right. Now I think many Muslims in general at that time were quite perplexed that their society, which was rooted really in, in kind of God's will in many ways, could fall under the, the dominion of the kind of quote-unquote godless society of the West. And that caused many of them to take very desperate measures to help kind of Muslim societies get back on track. So, for example, um, in 1896, uh, in 1896, uh, one of Afghani's disciples basically assassinated the Shah of Iran. So, uh, let me get assassinated spelled correctly here. Assassination of the Shah. Um, and then also, I think um, nowadays we have kind of a common analog of this in the context of suicide bombing. And I think these are just kind of more desperate acts by individuals, but I think it shows kind of the level of desperation people had reached at that time. All right, now the next question is kind of how do you handle uh, rapid modernization? Is, is there a sort of a more appropriate way? And there was some thought on that. So um, a few uh, famous individuals. So one was uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Abdu, and he was alive from 1849 until 1905. He was actually a friend of Al Afghani, and he basically believed that education, education, but not revolution, was the answer. And he believed, quote, that madrasa students should study modern science so they could help Muslims to enter the new world in an Islamic context that would make it meaningful for them. So in other words, he was thinking more of a confluence of kind of Muslim values, maybe Muslim society with uh, kind of modernity. And Muhammad Abdu also believed that it was, quote, essential to graft modern legal and constitutional innovations onto traditional Islamic ideas that the people could understand. A society in which people cannot understand the law becomes, in effect, a country without law, unquote. And for example, I mean, there are notions like shura, which is an Islamic principle meaning consultation. And you can kind of map that. You can map that to the notion of democracy, which is a Western notion. So in other words, if you can take Islamic ideas and figure out how you can explain them, in, in, or you can take Western ideas and maybe figure out how to explain them in Islamic terms, then people may be able to come to terms with those ideas and accept them more. Now, Muhammad Abdu had a younger contemporary whose name was Rashid, Rashid Rida. And Rida was alive from 1865 until 1935. And he really knew this process of kind of helping to, to make these places more modern and really accept some of Western culture was going to be a long and complex one. He actually was alarmed by 
by the increasing secularization of Arab intellectuals at that time, and he felt that this trend could ultimately weaken the Umar Muslim community. So he wanted to establish a school in which fiqh, which is the word for jurisprudence or Islamic jurisprudence, was taught alongside of modern academic subjects. In other words, having a school in which the, the students would learn um, not just seek, but also, uh, you know, more more common subjects like science and, and modern history and, and so on and so forth. And, and this would really allow fit to develop in a more modern context and, quote, make the Sharia an agrarian law code, which is, is what it was, compatible with the new type of society that the West had evolved, unquote. Now, the reformers, ultimately, one of the challenges they faced is they faced the need to answer European criticisms of Islam. Uh, and uh, I think in some cases they may have taken that too far. And this is, again, according to the Karen Armstrong. So, for example, um, this man right here is Muhammad Iqbal. Uh, Muhammad Iqbal was a famous uh, writer and poet. And he was alive from 1876 until 18 or 1938. Okay, Muhammad Iqbal... Um, was a poet philosopher in India, he, quote, insisted that Islam was just as rational as any Western system, um, unquote. And for example, uh, you know, he believed that, quote, monotheism liberated humanity from mythology, and the Quran had urged Muslims to observe nature closely, reflect upon their observations, and subject their actions to constant scrutiny, unquote. Now, I think this is in many ways a partial interpretation of, of the Quran, and again, this is Karen Armstrong's opinion, and that, quote, Iqbal's emphasis on the rational spirit of Islam led him to denigrate Sufism. So in other words, he was so focused on trying to maintain that, that Islam and every aspect of it was completely rational that, that he discounted you know, certain aspects of, of the faith, for example, some of the mystical aspects. Now, in general, many of the reformers up until this point were kind of hitherto primarily intellectuals, and they really just addressed the educational elite. Now, one example of somebody who kind of went beyond that was a fellow by the name of Hassan, Hassan Albana. Hassan Albana. He was actually alive from 1906 until 1949. And he actually was the founder, he was a young Egyptian school teacher, and he was the founder of, a, of something called the Society, Society um, of Muslim Brothers. Muslim Brothers. Society of Muslim Brothers. And basically, uh, this was an organization that was geared towards bringing many of these reformist ideas to the masses. Up until that point, a lot of the reformist ideas were really just addressed to a very small subset of the population, the population of intellectual elites. And his idea was, let, let's bring these messages to, to a much broader audience. And Albana ultimately believed that Muslims really needed to avail themselves of Western science and technology. And he believed that political and social reform had to go hand in hand with spiritual reformation. Um, Albana didn't believe that Islam could be compartmentalized to just kind of the private sphere of life. Instead, many of its values have to permeate all aspects of life. So I think that the common theme running through through all these threads is that, um, you know, if you do want to try to rapidly modernize or try to modernize the society, it's important to still kind of hold on to many of the cultural elements and to do that in a way also that, that doesn't lose sight of the original religious aspects of that society, especially in the context of Muslim societies. Hopefully that made some sense, and I'm, I'm going to kind of end this video right here. And overall, throughout this series of videos on Karen Armstrong's work, I really talked about how um, the impact of, of the West in Muslim society and, and some of the, the, the dangers that's caused, and, and especially in the area of, of rapid modernization.